Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ of Port Moody Pacific Grace. It's Kevin, and this morning I would like to invite you to walk with me through a passage in Mark. Uh, We're following the English Lent devotional today, which will be from the book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 17 to 31. As he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these I have kept for my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go, sell all that you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. Peter began to say to him, See, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house, or brothers, or sisters, or mother, or father, or children, or lands, for my sake and for the gospel, who will not receive a hundredfold now, in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands, with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. Now, this is a very famous story about a rich man who found it difficult to give up his riches, and this story grew up with me as I got older myself. Sometimes when I meditate on this passage, I see myself in the shoes of the disciples, and other times I see myself in the crosshairs as the rich man. It's easy and painless to imagine ourselves as this disciple. We gave up everything to follow Jesus, and now we're living a new life, ready to learn the lessons our Lord has to tell us. We learn about the importance of putting the Lord above all else and how even the most hopeless has hope in God. But there's no guarantee that nothing will ever come up in our lives and worry us to occupy our hearts, even with the best of intentions. Some time ago, I was deeply worried about my future. To me, no one understood and it was up to me to fix it. Then one day, God reassured me with a series of coincidences that shook me to the core as if he was saying, there's nothing that's out of my control. And now I ponder, you know, have I, if there's smaller, less obvious ways that God was nudging me throughout my life? Today is March 25, and we live in historic times these days. Many of us will face troubles and worries in areas of our lives, not even thinking months ahead, maybe even just today. Maybe you're in finance or healthcare, in your field of expertise or social circle or managing a home, and there are things that you know that perhaps you can't fully share with other people or expect them to understand. And you might feel that you're alone in carrying this burden, but I wonder, have you brought it to God? Or let me word it this way, have you have we expected God to have his hand in this as well? Has God already done things in that area of life already? Did we miss God in action? You see, what I realized recently was that the man, yes, he had great possessions, but perhaps it was that he considered these possessions his that was the problem, and that they were his responsibility. Did he accumulate all of this wealth by himself up to this point? What if he understood that his possessions, perhaps, are belonging to God, and that he was only the custodian of these riches? Would that have changed his attitude? Did he miss God acting in his life? So to reiterate, 
back to us. Do you think that as the expert of your field, that God is still Lord over these things? Does it exclude God's presence and power in these things that you were worried about? What has God already done in our lives? But let me share with you a final word of comfort. Jesus here in this passage says that he still loves us. In verse 21, it says that Jesus looked at him and loved him despite all the criticisms he had. And he asked us to follow him. And the world will see just how much Jesus loved the world less than five chapters away. Have a wonderful rest of the day. God bless.